Hello, welcome back to Desktop Publishing with Cork Express. My name is Martin Turner, and today we're talking about PDF export options. To get us in the mood with this, I want to share with you a discovery which I made a few days ago. So you recall some weeks ago, we looked at using uh, the gap mode in lines to help us with uh, different kinds of indicator lines. Well, since then, I discovered that the same method can help us a lot with maps. So I'm working on a map here uh, because um, near Brussels Airport, where I work, um, the, all the one-way systems have been turned around and even the taxis are getting lost. Google Maps isn't helping because Google Maps doesn't even show the correct route. So I've got to make a map. And anyway, it's much more professional to have a bespoke map than to just send somebody a Google Map. But there is a problem with maps, and that is that getting these roads to work and to intersect properly has always been very hard. In the 80s, I did it with Corel Draw, uh, in the 90s with Illustrator, uh, and uh, now I've done it with Ortelius, but that's specialist software. In Quark Express 2017, you can do it very easily. Draw a line, um, make it large enough, make it a double line, give it lighten, and give it a gap of white. And the result is that where it's white on white, it's white, and otherwise it keeps the black. And that works for anything. So I can just have a wavy line. I'm just gonna copy that setting. It doesn't actually copy the transparency mode. So I've got to go here again, normal, lighten. And that is absolutely great, up until the point that we hit a snag. Because if I export this now and open it in uh, Adobe Reader, which is a free reader from Adobe, it's not part of a subscription, they will come out perfectly well, and uh, several PDF readers will do that. But I'm on a Mac, and I default to uh, Apple Preview. And Apple Preview, if I go to default PDF output, does not support transparencies. So they're part of the PDF open standard, but for reasons known to themselves, Apple doesn't currently support it. Well, um, the result is that all my good work with my intersections is for nothing. Well, how are we gonna cope with that? Well, the answer, of course, is in uh, the export options. So let's go to the export options for PDF. And to solve this one, we're gonna go out of order, but to solve this one, uh, I just go to first to layers. Anything that doesn't support transparencies pretty certainly doesn't support layers either. So turn that off, we'll come back to that later. And I'm gonna turn flat and transparency on. Uh, not gonna change anything else, okay. And we're gonna save it now uh, and uh, we will see what happens. Now this is going to take longer because Quark Express uh, has got to do more work uh, as it flattens those transparencies. You could also flatten them outside Quark. You can flatten them in Calas PDF Toolbox, which some of you will have got as part of the Quark Express promotion a, a couple of months ago, uh, or you could flatten it in Acrobat Pro. But uh, it's done now, it's all baked up. Uh, and as you can see, that's now come in uh, correctly uh, and is indeed uh, as I had it uh, on the original. So that's great. If you're exporting for uh, use in Apple Preview, uh, which is used by about 10 or 20% of people using the web, then you've got to flatten those transparencies. Otherwise, it will just be disappointing. Well, let's go to the other export options because these are really very useful. Now, um, you've got some presets here. And all these are doing are, are presetting some of the options. And if we go to PDF style, you can do a new PDF output style when you've got the settings that you like. You can turn verification on to different kinds of verification. Now, if you've got a dodgy graphic in your file, then turning verification on will quite probably mean that it will not complete. It will tell you there's been an error. Now, 
you could say, well, actually, my printer can handle those errors it doesn't mind. In that case, send it to the printers and it'll be fine. But if you're going to send it uh, around the web, or you can send it to anything a little bit sensitive, or you want to archive it, then you're better off tracking down that dodgy graphic. Anyway, um, the first of the options we're going to look at is pages. And the key one here is spreads. You can turn spreads on and off. You can also export pages as separate PDFs. That can be very helpful, especially if you want to re-import them uh, using Image Grid. And you need to include blank pages if you have blank pages in the document. And Quark counts something as a blank page, even if there's only like one or two uh, little bits of text on there. So if you're discovering your pages aren't exporting, turn include blank pages on. And again, if it's paginating incorrectly because of lack of blank pages, then turn that on. Embed thumbnail, not usually necessary these days because the software does it for itself, but you can embed that. That's an old part of the standard. Now, if you're sending for final output print to an image setter, you don't need the metadata. But if you're sending it around the web or by email, you probably want to fill these things in. And it's just text, it'll take any text you like. Hyperlinks we talked about before when we talked about lists. And uh, you can turn hyperlinks off. And in fact, for press uh, PDF style, they are by default off because why would you want the hyperlinks? And in fact, you may be corrupting your document. I'll show you why. So you can have them turned on, you can have lists, you can have indexes, you can have lists as bookmarks, not all readers support that. And you can use a particular list about having lists here. Now, by default in Quark Express, they are invisible. So they only do something when you hover over them. But if you think that your readers really need to see it, make them visible, uh, give them maybe a highlight or an invert or an outline or an inset, uh, and uh, give them some kind of a frame or whatever. It will make your document look uglier, but it will also help uh, users who are perhaps not as used to uh, gamification of PDFs to find what you're doing. But that's why press has by default um, those turned off because you do not want uh, those kinds of things coming in. Now, you can also have your PDF inherit uh, the zoom uh, of the document itself. Uh, often you wouldn't want to do that, uh, but maybe you do. Now, the next bit is actually quite confusing. Uh, and it cost me a lot of grief before I figured it out. I'm sure you have, but if you haven't, in Photoshop, when you do JPEG high, that means high quality, which is low compression. In Quark Express, JPEG high is high compression. So uh, automatic zip JPEG low is the highest quality. Automatic zip JPEG high is the lowest quality with the highest compression. If you're confused about that, which I was for a while, uh, you may be wondering why do my documents not look great? You can downsample to 300 dpi, which for most documents is going to be uh, correct for press. Um, for uh, other things, you might down downsize even more. Though for myself, I usually find that giving a bit more resolution helps keep the quality there. So go back to the press preset for a second. I'm just clicking these presets to just change the options. Bicubic is the standard one. You can also downsample, not using bicubic. You can also upsample, or let's call subsample, uh, if uh, the resolution is too low. So if you have things which are 150 dpi and they're going to print perfectly because you've already worked out they have no sharp edges, your printer may still complain. In that case, just subsample them. Same for grayscale, same for monochrome. You see that you, uh, you have CCITT group four. You probably have not seen that since fax machines, which use that, uh, but you can have that if you want it. Compress text and line art almost always. Don't use ASCII format unless you know you have to. The standard is binary. Now, for color, in the old days, we sent separations. We no longer need to do that. So the modern workflow is the composite workflow. It's called late binding. And what that means is that the RIP, the raster image processor, which controls uh, the image setter or the digital to plate machine or the large format roll printer uh, or the digital press, whatever it is you're using, uh, that uh, it will do the work for you and it wants composite. 
You can do composite CMYK, you can do composite CMYK and spot if you want spot colors included. Again, not usually necessary. Um, you can send also uh, as is. Now, these are all uh, things which are produced, if I go back to here, in my uh, output styles, my color setups. So my outputs, you'll see that uh, those are in there. And if you want to have more things in there, you know what you're doing, uh, you can uh, create those and you can also use them to proof. So if you go to proof output, it proofs with the same methods that it will do the PDF output. Let's go back to export as PDF. And we'll go back to the options. Uh, so we've done color. Fonts, always include the fonts. Uh, there's really no reason not to. If you have fonts that don't allow you to include them, throw them away and buy some proper fonts. Uh, registration marks. Now, in default, they're off. They're only on in the press setup or if you do it yourself. If you choose the press, it'll be a standard type of registration mark, which is centered. You can have also off centered. With or with that, the length is five millimeters. That's pretty standard. You can include bleed marks, not usually required these days. Now, those registration marks will not do anything unless bleed is turned on. So again, in the press preset, you can make your own presets. They are on by default. In the other presets, they are off by default. So um, in the print one, it's zero millimeters. You can also set it to page items, which again, will only show the page items. Um, normally speaking, uh, for anything which is gonna bleed, you want the press preset and you want symmetric five or six millimeters, ask your printer what they want. You can have asymmetric, which allows you uh, to specify different bleeds. Usually you would clip at the bleed edge, you don't have to. Transparency we looked at, uh, if you're going to export for another piece of software, native is the way to go. This is not supported by all of the PDFX verifications and they won't allow it. Um, ignore transparency, not usually uh, the right solution unless uh, you know a reason why you want to do that. Flatten transparency if you're sending to a printer. So again, with press, um, actually it's now export natively by default, but if your printer, uh, for example, Amazon, uh, wants it flattened, then flatten it yourself, don't let them flatten it, and then check the preview in Apple Preview or something similar. Normally drop shadows can be 150 DPI because uh, they contain no sharp lines, they are shadows. But if your printer complains, just make that uh, 300, uh, it's just going to increase the file size a bit. Again, upsampling rotations, uh, you can go back to press preset again for a second, just get that sorted out. Um, normally you'd upsample to 300 DPI for images less than 2T5. Again, if your printer's not happy about that, uh, you can change that. And again, the flattening resolution for imported would usually be 300 DPI for press. You can include a job jacket, a JDF, which could, it's not in here, so it won't allow it, but it, should, it could include your contact details, instructions to the printer. If you're using that workflow, that's where you do it. Layers, um, by default, for press would be off. You do not want to create uh, PDF layers uh, in a document for a printing press. It can't use them. If you're creating for the web, uh, then usually you will want those on. And there are some settings here. Now, within the PDF standard, uh, it's explained that layers are really useful because you can have different languages on different layers which the user can turn on and off. I have never yet seen a PDF document that does that. And my experience is that when you try to use fancy PDF features like forms, most users don't understand them and it doesn't work. So PDF may support it, but does your user support it? That's more important. However, those features are in here if you want to play with them and see, again, check with the browser or the PDF preview you're going to be using. Because if a standard previewer like Apple Preview doesn't support it, it's not going to work generally. If you're exporting to use in Affinity Design or Illustrator, do keep the layers turned on. They will make it easier to work with. You can export your notes. Those are the notes using the notes function. 
Uh, good if you're sending it to a client for approval, make sure you turn it off. So usually when I get ready to print, I just go to the press preview and then change it, press preset and change it from there. Uh, Cause I might've changed all kinds of little things in the options. Redline, same thing. You can include Redline if you've used it. And again, if you change it to the press preset, it will uh, usually, uh, it's not done that this time. So um, make sure that's turned off. And you get a summary at the end, useful for checking through. But really the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Uh, if you do your um, output uh, and it appears to work, then you've won. Uh, if it hasn't worked, then it's not worked. So you just save it and check it. I've gone to the press preset now, and that should be giving me crop marks. It is doing. And uh, okay, it didn't turn the transparency off because that's no longer in the press default. So if I've got a printer who's finicky about transparencies, or I'm just a bit worried about sending that, I'm gonna turn transparencies off. Let Cork Express flatten it like we did before, and all is well with the world. Well, that wraps it up for the PDF export options. Not necessarily particularly exciting, up to the point that it's going wrong. And when things aren't working the way you expected, that's the time to check those PDF output options. The ones most likely to be causing a problem is you've got the bleed not turned on, even though you've got the crop marks turned on, if you've, or you've got bleed turned on with no crop marks, you've got the transparencies wrong, the layers are turned on, and the device looking at it doesn't support layers. Again, spreads could be a problem. Printers generally don't want spreads. If you're sending to somebody to print out on their home laser printer, they almost certainly do want spreads. And if your blank page is not appearing, uh, then turn blank pages on. For the rest, usually the presets will serve you well. Well, that's all for PDF. Uh, my name's Martin Turner, author of Desktop Publishing with Cork Express 2017. Please do have a look at the book. Uh, it's available on Amazon or local bookstores. Uh, until next time, which I think is the final time, happy corking.